Chris here for Tenka Tech and welcome to the channel. And today's video is all about the while loops and their fundamental part in programming. So let's get started now. I do not want you to be confused as it may seem that the while loop acts like an if statement. You must agree that in principle they do the same, and that is to look for a set of criteria. But this is where I stop. The while loop allows a section in the code to run continuously as long as the condition is true and will break out of the loop when it is no longer true or when the function to break its code. Actually, they are acting much more like a for loop that can run over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> and this is where you might be confused. As the while loop, it's very similar to a for loop where you put the word while and only then put the condition within the bracket with the code entered within the following curly brackets. The difference is that we have to manually control the variable here and the iterations manage only the conditions for us. It is better if I show you what I mean here. We will use the same code to show and explain the difference as this will be a great refresh for some of us. Let's look at this simple code here that for now all it's going to do is to print some word for us into the serial monitor and this is to validate what I'm saying actually. We start off by declaring x here and it is equal to 0. Then in the void header, we started our serial monitor with a 9600 board. And in the void loop, we have a condition here that declares if x is less than 10, we will print the word true into our serial monitor. Otherwise, the word false will be printed out. Then, at the end of every single loop, we just increment x by 1. So we start off at 0 and just keep up counting all the way up to 10. The if statement we have here does run only one time. The reason why it often looks like it runs more than once has to do with where we place our if statements, and it is inside here of a loop. So this if statement runs one time if it's true, get to the end here, and because this is a loop, it cycles back around and it seems like our if statement runs again, again, and again, and again. So yes, this if statement can happen more than once, but it can only happen one time for every time that the loop runs. So we can try to predict what's going to happen here and you can pause really quick and let me know what you think in the comment down below. So what's the fourth word you thought is was going to be printed out? I'm curious, you know, to kind of see what order you think the printing would be. Okay, let's validate this. Now we resume the video to see if you know what's going to happen when I run this. Wow, that was so fast, I didn't see anything. We can tick the auto scroll here to go back up like so and count how many we have. Yeah, if we go down, you can see we will be at 10. And then after, we are all the way down at false. So what's happening here? Let's close this. No need to put the auto scroll here. You will see if I close and reopen, auto scroll is enabled by default. All right. This is done. Now, as I was saying, I'm sure you thought of it for a second and knew what was going to happen. The if statement will start here at zero. This is true and it will print it. Then it exit the loop here and it will print false. Then we had one and we go back to the if statement, which is now one and we cycle back around. This is true again and we are going to print the word true. Then we are going to print the word false and we are going to increment again by one. We are going to do this 10 times. So this should say true, false, true, false, 10 times in a row. Then what's going to happen after the 10th time, it's no longer going to be true, which means it will not print true anymore as it will be bigger than 10. Instead, it will skip the first printed stage and the word false will get printed because X just keep getting bigger and it's never going to get into the first requirement again unless we reset the Arduino or we restart at zero. So let's put the delay because we couldn't see clearly earlier. Send this to the Arduino and just for the sake that we can see what's happening and even count them if we want to. And now we go in the false loop as I call it if we can call it that. <laughs> All right, stop that. Let's figure out what will happen if we just change the if statement here to a while loop and think about it. Go ahead if you want. You can pause again to consider the code that we really have to write. Do you think if we do like this and run it like so, what will happen? Well, look at that. Everything is true. There is no delay. Everything is going very quick. Let's find out why. So actually what's happened here, x starts at zero, this is true, so it prints true. Then it exits the while loop. And what does it do? Because it's a while loop, the only thing that the processor does 
will be the while loop here, this one here. And every time it prints it out, then the while loop check again. And it's still a zero because we have no way of incrementing anything in this while loop. Although it's true that we have the plus one for x here, it is not included in the while loop. And this tells us that for the while loop, we just not only have a way to get in, all right? We need a way to get out. So if I simply take this and paste it in my while loop, like so, so now we have a way to go in here and we have our way to go out here. This means that normally after running this 10 times, we should exit and execute this line of code here. Oh, I just noticed I forgot this. <laughs> okay, there. All right, so what's the difference from this and the if statement? Well, the difference is I will run this 10 times, I will exit, and then only I will have this printed out. I should have 10 truths and all the rest will be false afterwards. Let's test that. Send this to the Arduino, call the serial monitor, and yes it is. You can see that the ifs are printed really, really quickly. And that again is because inside the while loop here, there is no delay. The delay is after. Otherwise, you can see we have our 10 truths and then everything after that is our false. Now we have a clear difference between the if statement as we are not getting true and false 10 times in a row printed out before it only output false. Instead, we will get true 10 times and then we will get false. So now the only things to change in here is to avoid those pulses, as you can see here, to be printed forever. <laughs> it still continues. Stop that. And how do we do that? If I simply take this integer by avoiding of being general to be here inside the while loop and it will be more specific. So I just cut it out, not put it in here. Right. If I send it like this, you will see there will be a problem, but I'll show you. And as you can see, everything is false only. And that is because we are not specific enough. We really need to say, when do we start? We just have to say like so. You remember in the for loop, we have to be specific also when we start. Now I send this and check. And there we have it. And this works as intended. So we start at zero, compare and print it 10 times for the word true. We exit this. We say that it is false. We apply the delay and then we go back in here. It starts at zero again. And this is what's happening as predicted. This should just keep doing that forever until there is no power or someone stopped it. Lastly, let's compare this again one more time to the for loop. You will think that we just have to change this while with a for, but I will tell you there will be a problem. And that is the problem because if you remember, everything needs to be in between this instance here for the for loop. But don't worry, we are not going to delete or to type so much, we will just have to move things around. So if you watched my previous video on the subject, which was the for loop, you remember that what's come before that, it's this, okay? So we move this, put it in here, all right? Then we move this and put it in here. But sorry about that, let's tidy up, all right? But here, this doesn't serve any purpose because this is a separator of course. So we just have to move it and put it in here. Let's test to see if it loads and is not happy. But why? And that's simply because we didn't take this. I forgot to copy this. All right. Okay, so let's test this. Oh, it works. And what will it do? There it is. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? So we saw that the if statement somehow like the for loop and the while loop require the same element. It's just that they need to be formatted differently. So here we have where we start, where we stop, and how do we want to change this? So we have our three criteria for the for loop. So you may think that the for loop is nothing more than a more organized while loop. But why do we have both of them? Well, a lot of times, if you check a sensor or something that we do not know what the value is going to be, we are not sure how many times it's going to run. With the case for the for loop, we know already. You remember, you will do 10 sushi and you send them out. Then you know the for loop is fulfilled. But unlike with the while loop, let's say that you have 
the same sushi, but this time on the buffet. You do not know how many people will take it, so the buffet needs to be constantly filled in, you know? Maybe nobody will take the sushi, so the wild loop won't run at all, because the buffet will not always be full. Maybe if every time you refill the buffet, somebody takes it, we will have it run a dozen times. That's the main difference in between the form and the wild loop. But you could set up a wild loop that says as long as the temperature is less than 30 degrees Celsius, that by the way 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 303.15 degrees Kelvin for our friends overseas, mind you, I do not like when people are mocking you by saying you are metrically challenged. Anyway, do you start to see how the while loop is a little bit more natural to use, especially with a circuit that has sensors and outputs? Keep in mind that the output might be something a lot more interesting, like a motor, and the input might be something a lot more interesting, like a thermometer. As you can see here, while temperatures they are below 30 degrees, we will spin the fan at half speed in one direction. Then, while the temperature is greater than 30 degrees, then turn the fan to full speed and to the other direction. You see, all of a sudden, the while loop is a little bit more of a natural structure to use, to me at least. Back to the demo, where I use a potentiometer to replace the thermometer, as it is easier to adjust. Now, let me know, guys, if you wish me to give you a challenge to solve with the answer given on the next video. As you can see now, we are at zero and I will try to go very slowly like so. We are almost there. So now you will see once I pass the 50. There it is. There is a small delay and we are at the full speed. And if I go down Oops. <laughs> no worries. No fans were harmed during this video. That is it for today. Thank you for watching the video. And just to let you know, I started the Patreon where, if you want, you can support me in the game. If you enjoy it, you know what to do. You can do your YouTube things, like, if you want to, subscribe, you may as well. Or you can also press the bell icon if you want to be notified every time I post a new video. However, if you do not like this video, simply leave a comment down below and tell me why it's so. I will try to improve for you guys. Stay safe and bye now!